Fast Buggers and Fuckheads. We ain't gonna talk about motorcycles this morning. We gonna help a kid out with a stereo. Let me kill this son of a bitch. Now, first off, I mean, I can't, I can't stress enough, learn Ohm's Law. If you put two speakers in series, um, you've turned, uh, say, two 4 ohm speakers into an 8 ohm speaker, or a 4 and an 8 into a 12 ohm speaker. Pay attention to the minimum ohms load on the back of your amps. There's always a sticker or something silk screen back there. If it says 8 to 12, hey, keep it that way. You know, and granted, I've got this little carver over here. This thing's supposed to be able to handle a 2 ohm load. But the bitch has never seen anything less than 8 ohms, which is why it's still around today. Um, well, okay, there was that one time with that car sub, but anyway, y'all get the idea. That Kenwood right there, now she's been hooked up for about, yeah, two songs, maybe three. And this bitch ain't even cranked. I mean, you can see my gain is set way the fuck down here. And I've got the cut on this one set on seven, minus 17 out of 100. Um, let's see how well... This one likes an unbalanced load. So what I did is I hooked up that car sub back there. And I got another sub back there, a couple more over yonder. But uh, I hooked up that car sub back there just to give you a demonstration of what happens when you go too low on your ohms. Let's see, the finals are right in there. I probably don't even have to be directly on them. Oh wow, it's only 128 right now. Ah, there's the finals. 129.5. It was at 150 a little while ago on the raft of the first song, which means it probably from banging whatever being under load. But now when you set these up, um, like I said, make sure your ohms are right on your speakers. And if you have to add more amps, add more amps. Fuck. I mean, you can, you know, you might not get the best shit in the world, but beats the hell out of sitting there trying to put fans on top of your finals, keeping the shit cooled off. Um, but, when you set these up, crank your gain right there. Now on this one, I don't like bringing it up over three quarters because it's kind of hard to find a new carver anymore, and I like this one. Um, but normally I'd crank my gain up until I heard static, and then I'd back off until I didn't hear static anymore. Um, and that's about it, really. Um, and as far as the gain for both amps, it's being controlled right there off the EQ. You can use anything. You can use a mixing board cut your gains here and let your amps breathe. Um, don't overdrive an amp because believe it or not your input circuit has its own little set of finals and its own little quirks and your input circuit on your better amplifiers is designed to prevent clipping so that means if you throw too much power to it it's just going to clamp down and say fuck you I'm not hurting my finals. Um, on your pushier amps like that Kenwood right there um, that bitch ain't even going to protect itself and with that speaker on there that stupid 4 ohm back there I could probably crank it all the way and kill it within a day because Kenwoods were never made very good they're not like a Sansui Sansui fuck you can drop them bitches down to 4 ohms and they don't care um, they won't tell you that in the book but Sansui's tech sites there's a lot of guys running them at four and six ohms um, but that's that simple you know don't go if you hook up your speakers in parallel say two ohm, two four ohm speakers in parallel you've just made a two ohm speaker well that's great if you've got an amp that can handle a two ohm or less load um, if you have a choice always do them in series and it's okay to go to 12 or 16 ohms. It's okay to go up in ohms on your load. It is not okay to go down in ohms because that's what heats and cooks your finals. 
Um, I tried to give you a better demonstration when I first checked that a while ago while it was playing that one song. It was at 150 degrees in the, in the final section of that amp. Um, for comparison purposes, I don't think I've ever seen that carver over 100 and 105, 106, maybe. Um, anyway, hopefully that was helpful to someone because um, apparently there's a lot of kids that don't know, you know, don't don't go below in ohms what your amps can handle. Um, I mean, some of these speakers, them speakers there, on the end, they came out of my shed. And, you know, they're 400 watt a piece speakers, but I only drive them with 100 off that carver. And the Kenwood, the only thing it's driving is those uh, two paradigms in that car sub right now, because I've got the uh, Eclipses are out. Um, they're getting a pair of PV Black Widows in them. And those old Yamahas, yeah, they've got car subs in them, in them. Um, but I had the sense enough to make my own matching transformer. Real simple to do. Um, you can make your you can make your own crossovers and do it in there. I just used a matching transformer and the crossover that was already there. Um, I'm not going to go into details on how to do that because I'm trying not to be the electronics guy here locally or anywhere else for that matter. I'm retired. I intend to stay that way. But uh, anyway, y'all get the idea. Hopefully I was helpful. If not, well, tough shit. But hopefully I saved some kid from trashing an amp because he over overloaded his amplifier. We'll holler at y'all fuckers and fuckheads later.